codes a diagram. Everyone loves sequence diagrams. It shows the flow of your application. Hi, my name's Eddie, and I work with many clients from government departments to high street banks to open source projects. And I'm keen about getting you into open source and improving your skills and your career and getting you the job that you want, that you deserve. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel, join me at hackathons, conferences, live streams. Let me know what events you're going to, what challenges you're having. Let me know in the comments below the challenges, successes you're having, and let's get the conversation started and let's both succeed together. Diagrams! Urgh. They're always so fun to start off drawing a diagram. And then, when things get more complicated or you come back to it a week or a month later, you can't remember what diagram program you're using, you have to start drawing a diagram from the beginning again. Well, do you know that you can code your diagram? Yes, code your diagram. And there are so many benefits to this, not just for you, but for your entire team, because it's just like code. And you may be thinking, what well, is that not more complicated than a drag and drop? No, it's actually just like Markdown. It's actually really straightforward. I'm gonna show you how you can use a library called Mermaid. And if you're using something like ASCII docs with ASCII doctor, you can even integrate that into your documentation, building a website, building a PDF, and it all integrates seamlessly. And there are at least a dozen different diagram coding libraries you can use. But in this video, we're gonna focus on Mermaid that looks like this. Everyone, your core team and your wider team really loves diagrams. So let me show you how you can make this diagram with a few lines of markup code. Everyone loves sequence diagrams. It shows the flow of your application, be it a module, be it the full stack or the full platform. Everyone loves this. You can really see what's going on. So let me show you how straightforward it is to build this. Let's head over to my computer. As you can see, that's my YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed yet and you're interested in upskilling your code, getting into open source, going to tech events, hackathons and conferences, then don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell button so you get notified every time I publish a video. Don't forget, it's free. You just gotta sign in to YouTube with your Google account. Now we're at my computer, look at my screen. This is my GitHub account. If you fancy following me on GitHub, then feel free. And if you want me to look at your open source projects and review them and give you some open source tips, then let me know, leave a comment below, and I'll gladly take a look and do that on a video or a live stream for you. So let's go along to Mermaid. This is an open source library, and you can use it without even installing it. I'm gonna show you how you can do that. That's how awesome it is. So I just wanna show you what types of diagrams they have. So recently, they've added two sets of new diagrams, but if you scroll down, you get to see the other diagrams from Gantt diagrams to swim lanes to flow diagrams to class diagrams. And here are some examples. I wanna show you how you can take these examples and use them just in the browser without even actually installing anything. The, the sequence diagram is one of my favorites. It's something that really bridges the gap between the core team and the wider team because then people get to understand what's going on. Gantt diagrams are really useful, class diagrams, and they've got some new ones. But let's go and show you some actual examples. So go into their live editor, again, without logging in, without installing anything. You can click on different examples. They give you the code on the left and then the diagram on the right but you also get a markdown link that you can actually use as a free service and put it in your markdown files or your issues and it will render it within there for you without you um, adding any binary. But let me show you do that in a minute. So just go through the different examples and it looks really useful. So let's just look at, let's take sequence diagrams as our example. It goes from Alice to John. So Alice becomes the first node and John becomes the second. And what these mean in between is one dash means it's a solid line. And then you always have the two greater than symbols and the plus means start the flow. This is a block on the right to show when it starts and stops. You don't have to have that, but it is really useful. And then Alice to John again, then John to Alice, it's got a double dash because that means making it a dotted line. So if I remove one dash, it's now a solid line. So that's entirely up to you depending on your, on your flow. And then the negative here, just before the second part, is where the block on the right-hand side of the journey actually finishes. It's a join up. If you've got things happening asynchronously, you can see where they start and stop. And that's it. I mean, that's how simple it is. And then if I take this markdown link below and then go to my, um, any one of my open source projects, 
and just go raise an issue or update a markdown file, it can be anything, then I paste that in and hit preview, you will see that you actually see the diagram, but we haven't exported a JPEG or PNG or anything like that. And that's how awesome it is. What I do highly recommend doing under that link, wherever you put it in your markdown or an issue, underneath put a code block and paste that code. That way, you do have this library running locally or on CI to generate any PDF documentation, website documentation, then actually get the code there to generate the diagrams that you need. And that's how simple it is. Let's make diagrams and documentation fun for everyone and useful to everyone. This, this allows you to keep it up to date. So therefore, a documentation diagrams don't fall behind. The only thing worse than not having diagrams is having diagrams and documentation that is out of date. This way, every time you change a bit of code to update the test, you can update your documentation and diagram. Treat tests and documentation and diagrams as code. I hope that helps. Let me know in the comments below what else you'd like to see and how I can help you accelerate your career and get involved in open source. See you in the next video.